Is it a myth or is it the truth? Because today's content is talking about some things you may not know about the game that you play, including storing more than 150 cards in your catalogue, pulling more than 50 picks off the board, yeah, I know. Also the person finishing second getting a better King of the Ring reward from you, the bastards. Let's go! And the next myth is a rather complicated one and this is one that has been going on since WWE Supercard and Cat Daddy decided to reduce the amount of picks that could be used to pick cards off of the board. Now in this one, it's talking about the board picks are allowed. They, now you can get access up to 50 board picks. This question, or this myth, is it is actually possible to save more than 50 board picks. Now this, in a way, is true. And the reason why it's true is because of ring domination. Now if you were just to save it normally, the maximum amount of picks you can get it's anything up to, I believe, 56 to 57 that you can get access to normally. But you can actually get access to more than 100 card picks at a time if you save up your shards in Ring Domination and also in Exhibition or Raid Road to Glory or PCC, whichever one you want to call it. You go into that game mode, then go to Ring Domination and save it up. The amount of picks is anything up to or more than a hundred in terms of individual cards. Now, obviously Ring Domination works slightly differently, but this is true and I have actually linked into a recent video I've done on Ring Domination where I actually had 51 board picks which resulted in a survivor pull and also then 55 shard picks that actually eventually had 130 cards in total. So it is definitely possible to have more than 50 board picks. It's just a little bit more complex than you'd expect. Next question comes from Johnny Reed on Twitter. It says, is it possible to get back-to-back -back survivor pulls? This is true. We do have actually got proof of this in this image here, which is just crazy. Look at that. Back to back Diva Pauls, Alicia Fox and Brie Bella by GWAR on Twitter, who posted this picture. Absolutely incredible. The biggest amount of luck I probably have ever seen. Now, this is a big question that is actually unanswerable. And this comes from Sachi. Does being a runner up in King of the Ring get you a better reward than winning it? Now, this again is a huge myth. It is most likely false because it is just completely random who you get as your rewards for King of the Rings. But there is potential evidence to state that this is actually true because a lot of people in the past have actually got much better rewards. In fact, a lot of people at the beginning of the tier were getting a lot of Diva Pros when they were finishing second in their King of the Rings. The simple point for me as it goes to rewards, I have had better rewards from winning than I have from coming second, but a lot of other people have had very different reactions and experiences. Just let me know what you've had in Twitter, alternatively in the comment section below, because for me, this one is completely unsolvable because everyone has different experiences. Now this next myth is maybe an older school one, something that maybe some of you who haven't played Season 2 wouldn't know about, but Brock Lesnar's Season 1 Legendary card was actually originally a different card. Now this actually is true. The current Season 1 Brock Lesnar card looks like this. Now it's not his best card in the world, but it is still decent-ish. So you can see here's uh, Brock Lesnar card here. And then what we need to do is just literally put it on the image here. And this was what Brock Lesnar's card used to look like. And this was completely different. I'm not sure where the image came from, but it definitely looked less like Brock Lesnar than the one does. And it looks more cartoony, whether that was from a previous WWE game, I've never known it. But this is something that showed up in a lot of pre-release. It was when the game was originally released. And then literally very soon afterwards, the image actually changed and went back to the one which you know now, which is this one here. This next myth is actually more of a fact, and this is that Cat Daddy would like you to believe that you can't hold more than 150 cards at once. Now this next thing I wouldn't recommend you do on a regular basis because you could lose the cards that you actually pull, but this is actually false. You can actually have more than 150 cards in your catalogue, but it is a complex way. You cannot pull more than 150 or have more than 150 at once when you are in exhibition or in Road to Glory or any event that requires you to have 
cards and cards pulled on a regular basis. If you pull more than one, for example, in ring domination, one card pull, and you have, let's say, 149 cards, and you pull one that gives you two to three cards at once, then, of course, you will go over the card limit, and you will have more than 150. But the way that you, you can actually do this next trick is by using PCC. Now, PCC, obviously, runs a little bit differently where you collect rewards. Now, in Teams PCC and PCC, and I haven't checked Teams RTG yet, but also your King of the Ring rewards, you can have 150 cards in your, your lineup and your catalogue and still claim your King of the Ring rewards and PCC rewards and Teams PCC rewards, which means your total reward number can go up to anything up to 154 to 155 at any one time. With Teams RTG, if that was to work, then of course as well, you have the ability to go up to anything up to let's say 158 to 159 but those are the only ways you can go over your card limit that's it from today's WWE Supercard Myths please leave your myth questions or what you want solved in the comment section below or alternatively hit me up on Twitter you know where to go and if you don't go into the description below links are all there of course one last thing to say and that is to Sulib.